If you're tired of missing out on opportunities to connect with others, then you need to figure out how to be outgoing with social anxiety. And it's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. I'm about to share with you the exact same process that I've used to feel more comfortable interacting with anybody. My name is Mike Macapinlock. I help STEM professionals improve their social confidence. If you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every single week. Whether you like it or not, you can't really avoid talking to people. That's why learning how to be more socially confident is such an important skill to develop. Once you do, you'll be able to thrive in your personal, romantic, and professional life. That being said, here are 12 actionable tips that you can implement right away. All right, let's get into it. Tip number one is to stop taking things personally. Rejection hurts because it triggers the same part of our brain when we experience physical pain. That's why most of us try to avoid it at all costs. But if you don't figure out how to put yourself out there, imagine what kind of life you're going to have. I can assure you that it'll be boring, lame, and uninspiring. If you wanna know how to be outgoing with social anxiety, you have to be empathetic. Instead of always making things about you, put yourself in other people's situations. Try to consider where they're coming from. The thing is, you just have no idea what's going on in people's lives. I know for me, I'm not in a very social mood if I'm not feeling all that great. That being said, the next time someone turns you down, try not to make it about you. They're probably just having a bad day when you try talking to them. You can't know for sure what they're thinking about, so avoid jumping to conclusions right away. When you try to understand other people's point of view, you'll stop taking things personally. As a result, you'll be a lot more likely to take risks instead of playing it safe. Tip number two is to pay attention to your emotions. Most people who struggle socially tend to replay past mistakes in their heads over and over again. As a result, they often assume the worst case scenario and imagine how bad things will go. It's no wonder they feel nervous and anxious all the time. Remember, you get more of what you think about the most. If you wanna know how to be less self-conscious, you have to be aware of what you're focusing on. You have to separate yourself from your thoughts and be able to choose the ones that empower you. That's why it's so important to pay attention to how you feel. A negative emotion is usually a sign that you're telling yourself a disempowering story. Whenever you feel bad, pause and take a moment to assess what you're thinking about. Question your limiting belief to see if it's true or not, and then reframe it into something more encouraging. Doing this will definitely take a bit of practice, so be patient with yourself. After a while, you'll figure out how to get out of a funk and make yourself feel better. Tip number three is to appear more friendly. Remember, the majority of your communication is nonverbal. It's not just what you say, but how you say it matters too. To prove my point, let me ask you a question. Would you wanna to talk to someone who's slouching, have their arms crossed, and has a frown on their face? Probably not, right? If you're wondering how to be outgoing with social anxiety, you have to appear more friendly. Make an effort to work on your nonverbal communication as well. When you have a more open body language, you signal to others that you're not a threat to them. To help you get started, maintain proper eye contact and have a genuine smile on your face. Remember to stand up straight and avoid crossing your arms or legs. When you do these things, you'll come across as someone open and approachable. Tip number four is to remind yourself of your positive traits. Imagine how good it feels when someone compliments you. You can give yourself those positive emotions over and over again if you want to. You can do this by thinking of your positive traits more often. In fact, this is one of the best confidence-building exercises that I know. Those who struggle socially do the opposite. They beat themselves up mentally and have really negative self-talk. If you want to know how to be outgoing with social anxiety, you have to focus on what you like about yourself more often. If you do this long enough, you'll realize that you're a person of value and that you have a lot to offer in any relationship. Knowing this will help you raise your self-worth and you'll be less intimidated by others. Tip number five is to stop caring about what others think. If you want to know how to be outgoing with social anxiety, you have to manage your expectations. Believe it or not, nobody's paying as much attention to you as you may assume. Think about it. Unless it was recent or something really serious happened, you probably don't remember things that others did, right? The truth is, everyone is so focused on themselves. They're preoccupied with their own thoughts and are too concerned about their perceived shortcomings. They don't have time to worry about you. Like I said earlier, most people are not judging you as harshly as you may think. You might as well do what you want to do and act more like yourself in social situations. Tip number six is to build one skill at a time. If you want to figure out how to be outgoing with social anxiety, make sure you start small. Focus on building one skill at a time and improve gradually. That way, you'll see some quick wins and gather positive reference experiences as well. You'll prove to yourself that you're actually capable of having good interactions with others. Unfortunately, I've worked with clients in the past who got some bad advice online and got turned down repeatedly. As a result, they became jaded and timid. 
They just assume that there's something wrong with them and that they're not meant to figure this whole thing out. To prevent that from happening to you, focus on the easiest thing that you can do first. For example, you can start just by asking strangers for a time or a direction. Once you're comfortable doing that, try to make some small talk. After that, you can figure out how to keep a conversation going and add witty banter as well. Do you see how that works? To prevent yourself from feeling overwhelmed, prioritize your learning, and build on your social successes. Tip number seven is to be interested in others. We all have an innate desire to feel important. That's why we like people who like us. If you're wondering how to be outgoing with social anxiety, follow your curiosity. The best way to do this is to think of yourself as a student. View every interaction eager to learn something new. The next time you chat with someone, make sure you actively listen. Be present and give them your undivided attention. Lean forward to show interest and not in agreement to encourage the other person to keep sharing. Ask more open-ended questions and really try to understand where they're coming from. When you're genuinely curious about others, you'll make them feel seen, heard, and understood. Tip number eight is to find a social hobby. Learning how to be outgoing with social anxiety doesn't have to be complicated. The best way to figure out how to put yourself out there is to add a social component to activities that you already like to do. For example, you can volunteer for a cause that you believe in. See if there's a meetup group for a particular interest that you have. You can sign up for courses to learn a new skill and meet like-minded people at the same time. Does that make sense? The thing is, if you don't enjoy going to bars and clubs to socialize, there are plenty of other options. You just need to be creative and intentional with how you go about it. If you're wondering how to make friends as an introvert, this is one of the best ways to do it. Tip number nine is to be more observant. If you wanna know how to be outgoing with social anxiety, you have to get good at making small talk. At the end of the day, you need to know how to have casual conversations with others in order to build rapport with them. If you're not sure where to start, try to be more observant. Get out of your head and use your environment to help you come up with topics that you can discuss. What you share doesn't have to be anything profound. To make this work, you have to stop filtering yourself and just say the first thing that comes to mind. Tip number 10 is to practice telling your stories. Not knowing what to say is a common issue that I hear from a lot of our clients in our social skills coaching program. If you're wondering how to be more talkative, preparation is key. Make sure you take the time to come up with things that you can share with others. If you think about it, most people usually talk about the same topics over and over again anyway. That being said, think of interesting ways to discuss your work, your upbringing, places you've been to, events you've attended, and your interests. Once you have a few stories written out, start incorporating them into your day-to-day -day interactions. That way, you can gauge how people respond and be able to make adjustments accordingly. For example, you can chat with your barista the next time you get your coffee. Try to engage the cashier at the grocery store. Talk to your driver the next time you take an Uber. These small actions may not seem a lot, but they do add up to something big eventually. I know it's obvious, but the more you practice, the faster you'll improve your conversation skills. Tip number 11 is to elaborate on your responses. Most people who struggle socially have a bad habit of giving short responses when someone asks them a question. This makes it difficult for anybody to keep talking to them because they don't have a whole lot to work with. If you're wondering how to be outgoing with social anxiety, try to volunteer information about yourself as well. Avoid giving one-word answers and elaborate on your responses. For example, let's say someone asks you what you do for fun. If that's the case, feel free to talk about your hobbies, what got you into it, and how it makes you feel. The more details you share, the easier it'll be for others to maintain a conversation with you. They'll have more information available to them, which could trigger other topics that both of you can discuss. Tip number 12 is to get the right feedback. It's hard to make improvements if you don't know exactly what to work on. That's why you need to have someone show you your blind spots. For now, what I want you to do is to ask people that you trust for some honest feedback. Get them to tell you what you're doing well and what you could do better in social situations. Doing this is a great way to increase your level of self-awareness. But if you wanna get results much faster, consider working with a social skills coach. That way, you'll have expert guidance and have a proven plan to follow as well. You'll make fewer mistakes and prevent yourself from feeling frustrated. Either way, whatever feedback you get, don't take it personally. Learn from it and use it to improve your interactions in the future. By doing this, you'll get a better understanding of yourself, how you show up for others, and what you could do differently. If you're shy and technically skilled and you want to know how to approach and talk to anybody, remember to download your free social confidence cheat sheet. The link is in the description below. If you're tired of struggling socially and you want to learn more about our social skills coaching program, book your free consultation today and let's connect. The link is in the description below as well. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe, and share it with someone who you know who could benefit from it. And now, let's turn it to you. Which one of these steps are you going to implement first? 
Are you going to stop taking things personally or work on being more interested in others? Leave me a comment below and let me know. All right, that's it for me for now, and I'll see you in the next video.